Hell yeah, dude. Episode 35 of Something From Everyone. I'm here with Dan Slosser, dude. What's uh, up, Peter? I was laughing the other day that the show is now internationally syndicated, uh, which just means it's on the internet and that the internet's available <laughs> in all the countries. That's so um, sick, though. But yeah, I had that, that idea, and it's been making me laugh ever since, that like... <laughs> Yeah, that used to be such like a huge metric for success, and now it's like, no, you can literally just sit in your basement and have an internationally syndicated show. It's so <laughs> sick, honestly. The the opportunities are kind of endless. You like, we live in a world where more and more people are kind of able to just do whatever they yep. feel like doing and putting their passion to. It's pretty sick. Yep. Uh, and I think, of course, you're the perfect person to talk to there because you just started a record label. Thank you, uh, thank so you. RS Hardcore or Hardcore Record Label called uh, RS. What does the RS stand for? Oh, man. <laughs> you know, so there actually is a meaning behind it. Okay. But the fun thing is we're trying to, like, keep it kind of a mystery. Some people have been able to guess okay. what it means, and we haven't really confirmed it. Only it's not some... RuneScape, right? That's the only important question here. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. no. Um, <laughs> That's what I'm really trying to get to the bottom of. That's the whole point of the show today. <laughs> definitely not RuneScape records. Bummer. You heard okay. it here first. That's, that's a real heartbreaker <laughs> for me, but I'll, I'll get uh, by. But, um... Part of the fun behind like keeping the name just that abbreviation is there's more mystery behind it. Mm -hmm. It gives people more fun to like interpret what they think it means. Sure. Everybody else has their own meaning behind it. We have we know for sure what it is, yeah. like a hundred percent, but we're not we're not spilling the beans on that anytime soon. That's fun. I think it's both <laughs> true as like the the literal identity, but also like the the metaphoric identity of the label. It's like we exactly. are all as, as the public still figuring out exactly what what hardcore bands are uh, part of your identity. What is that sound going to be that you know we tie to your brand? Exactly. Uh, so it's an exciting thing to find out. I think before we get into the record label, I want to know like the the context of before this thing. Uh, so were you in bands before when like you got fucked over by a label and you go oh this would be why i should start one like where does this journey kind of start in the the grassroots part of it uh for the most part i i've been in a bunch of bands not a bunch but i've been in a fair mm -hmm. amount uh starting in 2013 my first band out of high school when i was 15 years old Hell yeah. uh, starting it with some dudes in their 20s who were very talented they knew what they were doing it was a great experience it was the only band I ever got to release music through, unfortunately. Okay. I, I've joined... What are they called? Can we shout them out? Yeah, yeah sure. I'll, I'll give them names. I don't care. So the first one was Where the Corpses Fall. That okay. was the still to this day the longest time I was involved in a band. Hell yeah. Then there was a post-hardcore metalcore band called At Your Forefront for mm -hmm. 2016, which I think that's how we met. Yep. You did promo photos for us that we ended up not using because we were going to rebrand completely As you do. change yeah. everything that is and a classic local band move yeah yeah and then it all falls apart another yep. classic move <laughs> <laughs> so that was fun uh that's how i met calvin actually uh we were talking about that before we started mm -hmm. um me and him were in that band together with i want to say chris fox and uh john inglis yep. shout out to those guys love them to Dude, death. shout out john i actually did a touring with john a couple years after uh so it's funny to, like, when, when he was in um Call, call it home, home? Yep. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that was uh, sick yeah it was funny for us to like back when we were like on the van i think we were driving down together he like picked me up some we were carpooling down to long island to get going and there was a moment where we were both kind of like oh fuck we know each other don't we <laughs> yo, <laughs> yo that's so, so sick yeah it was sick um, a good guy hell Love yeah him. dude uh so a couple local bands yeah no oh, it's yeah. not a good local band it doesn't fall apart so yeah they yeah fall apart doesn't quite work out yeah that's Pretty much how all of the bands I was in kind of happened. Like yeah. I played in Pry as a fill in for a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I can't. I'm not gonna say anything about that. But yeah. um, the last band I was in was this band called Locked Out. Mm -hmm. uh, shout out to Cody, Anton, Steve, Dale, all those dudes. Kings, yeah, yeah, yep. legends. Uh, that was probably the most fun I ever had in a local band. Honestly, okay. we all there was this great sense of camaraderie. Uh, we just gelled together whenever we were writing something or just jamming out songs that they already had written before I joined. Okay. Uh, and what are you playing in these bands? What's your... I was doing guitar in uh, that band. I was playing bass in Pry. I did vocals in Where the Corpses Fall and At Your Forefront. Okay. So the whole diverse spectrum of it all. Uh, is there one of those uh, three that stands out as like your, your forte, one that you're most comfortable in, or did you kind of enjoy the, the grab bag of roles? I like the grab bag, especially... I gravitate more towards... Um, Towards vocalist and guitar more. Okay. I've been playing guitar since I was 10. Okay. Like, actually got a guitar, took some lessons. Uh, but it was pretty cool. I, yeah. I enjoy doing... I enjoy writing riffs, but vocals 
way more fun. Okay. Way more fun. Uh, I want to touch on guitar lessons quickly. So you said you took lessons at 10 years old. Are these classical music, classical guitar, more like jazz guitar lessons? Is it from a metal guy? Like, yeah, what are you learning at 10 years old? It was kind of just, um, it started off this guy that I used to go to. His, he, they had a shop near my house and um, taught me Nirvana songs. This dude was definitely like more of like a 90s uh, centered okay. guitar player. So like, I think I learned a Chili Peppers song. Definitely can't remember. It. <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, it it was just like simple power chords, regular chords, yeah. um, different keys, all that type of stuff. But most of it flooded my brain, and I was. It hit me at one point. I'm like, there's some other stuff I want to learn. But every time I suggested to this guy, he's like, eh, I don't really know this. So yeah. let's try this stuff. And I'm like, okay. Sure. So I took it in my head. I'm like, all right. I'm going to try to like teach myself some stuff and yeah. not have to worry about somebody else telling me, hey, this is how you should play. I'm like, I want to figure that out myself. You and know? It's, it's funny because like uh, he was probably trying to keep you on a more traditional standard route that is mm -hmm. the correct choice for 95% of people. Oh, for sure. And probably in hindsight might even be the right choice for someone who wants to learn metal to like spend more time in this foundational yeah. era. You got to know the basis. Um, yeah. You know? But if you don't want to know it right then, then who cares, right? Ultimate, yeah. like Ultimate Guitar will be a better teacher at that <laughs> point in time. If that's Yo, what you're motivated up. to do and interested to do. Shout out Ultimate Guitar. <laughs> uh, was music in your family, was this like a, a, a natural course for you to take or were you very like black sheep in this? Uh, honestly, music is always like, my parents are not musicians. Mm -hmm. I think my grandfather, rest in peace, he was a drummer okay. for the Marine Corps band at one point, which that's is cool. cool. He was okay. also like an honor guard for... Dwight the Eisenhower, really dope shit. That's um, a wild life. Hell yeah. Right? Okay. So he was like, as far as I know, the only drummer other than actually my uncle too. He plays drums, but okay. kind of gave up on that. My parents weren't musical, uh, but they were always playing some type of music. My dad is huge into 80s stuff like Depeche Mode, okay. U2, uh, anything in that realm. He's with it. He's seen All Sticks, right. Queen. He would always tell me stories about bands he saw, and I'm like, no fucking way <laughs> you saw queen play in new haven are you serious like that's, that's crazy wild. so damn it was always something i could gravitate towards for sure because it was just everywhere like he would play black sabbath for me when i was a kid queen uh with their last album uh innuendo i believe great record you play wow. that all the time so it just was something i naturally gravitated towards i didn't think i was going to be a part of like playing it yeah especially not what i'm doing now but it was always there always hell yeah. great uh hell yeah so at 10 years old we start getting into it get into some bands that yeah fall apart as bands naturally do uh what do you like take from that i mean i guess in in hindsight when i ask you to say uh my line is always like, i'm not asking you to say who stole the most money from the local <laughs> band fund uh but just like yeah i mean was it the the personal element that fell apart were you guys uh, I know we talked about promos that fell apart and you had to rebrand. So yeah. I think another common failure for local bands is this effort to constantly be redefining your identity instead of just staying in a lane and yeah. really flushing out that idea. Like, yeah, what in, in hindsight, what fell apart? What do you look back on as like, a, ah, fuck, that's where we went wrong? Honestly, for every band, it was kind of something different. Yeah. Uh, like for the first band, for instance, I was a dumb kid. Okay. You know, like there was a certain point when we were playing stuff and I didn't have my heart in it like I used to. Um, I eventually just was like, you know what? I, I don't know if I want to quit this. I've been so involved in this for yeah. like half of high school and a little bit afterwards. I was just like, ah, this isn't, I don't know if I want to walk away from this. So mm -hmm. I tried to make it work for a while. And eventually the band, I think, felt it too. They were like, hey, we need to have a talk. <laughs> and me being... Yeah. You know, like a distance away from my band members, I'm like, yeah, we could just talk about this right here. Y'all can mm -hmm. call me, whatever. Not really a bright move, you know. Sure. I was 18, stupid as hell. Yeah. So they just told me flat out, they're like, we think we should se uh, separate. We should part ways. Like, you should go do the thing you want to do, and we're going to keep doing what we want to do. Yeah. And as far as I know, I think the three of them still are doing something. Oh, yeah. Not with that same name, but I'm sure. pretty sure they're all working on stuff, whether it's together or, excuse me, or separately. Um, like, I know the drummer for that band, he's constantly busy. The bass player for that band, super busy, mm -hmm. really talented dudes. Love them. The guitar player, I don't know what he's up to. But I think I always try and keep exactly that in, uh, in context as I'm talking to band members now. It's like, if I asked you about them six months after this happened 
it would have been like fuck those guys but now it's like no yeah cool exactly. i'm happy that they're all doing their thing and yeah. i try and keep that in mind now and sit down with people like i don't want anyone to say fuck someone now that in 10 years they're gonna be saying no actually whatever life goes on we all grow yeah exactly um, it's not really like good to hold on to grudges yeah. or any sour feelings it's yeah. like how can you grow yeah. at all if you're gonna just keep holding on to the past and clinging yeah. to it like oh these yeah. guys fucked me over when <laughs> i was 18 it's like i don't even i don't even think i thought of it like that then i was yeah. just like we agreed completely it's like yeah. you guys want to do something different than what i want to do let's let's just go do it yeah so i think it speaks to how like how challenging it is to get the perfect recipe of a band like it's a miracle when you end up with five people four people six people even whatever that number yeah. is that actually can function and like <laughs> succeed and stay together and have their creative visions and creative rhythms align even so not mm -hmm. just we want to make a record but like do you want to make a record every three years we want to make it every six months like how how intense are we trying to be what is yeah is it exactly. worth the perfect record or are we just trying to put one out every year so we can tell the most merch yeah off just it. to put something out there yeah. yeah like there's so many so it's not just what do we want to create the same kind of hardcore but also like yeah in what way do we want to identify as a hardcore band and i think oh, those for sure two are wildly different sometimes it defines yeah the band where all of those align between all the members it probably doesn't happen honestly i'm probably uh glamorizing it and probably there's more yeah. butting heads that happens but like I think in a, a perfect world, when we think of the, I don't know, the knocked looses of the world, of the bands who just seem to really love each other and love being each other's company, like, oh, yeah. it's a miracle when you end up with that, that group of people that, yeah, do align in that way. The crazy thing about knocked looses, yo, those dudes, like, to your point, they literally seem like the best of friends. Yep. You know, that's why, like, some bands don't work out because sometimes you can have both worlds where your best friends but the stuff you're making, you just can't gel together on that level. Yep. And there's also different coin opposite sides where you guys can create some real heat together, mm -hmm. but you're constantly at each other's throats or butting heads. Like yep. it's, it's really great when you find that middle point where it's like, okay, cool. We all fuck with each other and we make good shit together. Mm -hmm. Let's keep this going for as long as we can until we can't anymore. Yeah. Which is pretty much every band i've ever been a part of <laughs> <laughs> and so ultimately i guess the the summary there is that you decide you can't enough times you decide that you want to move up the chain so instead of trying to get the band life to work you decide to pursue the record label aspect of it yeah uh, is that kind of the fair summary there uh the, basically it's that as well as just like i couldn't i really couldn't get anything together like every time anybody that i want to play music with they live so far away from me where it's yeah. like it's a real commitment to that mm -hmm. uh where i'll just sit at home write some shit send it off to one of my friends and be like yo you want to do something like this and they're like yeah mm -hmm. but schedules don't line up so after years and years of that i just decided you know what let me just help other bands if i can't get one going myself let me just help put people on to stuff like mm -hmm. i don't care it's just i'm in it for the music really it's all it is and ultimately you're deriving from your own failures to prevent other bands from having those failures and i don't know exactly. if failure is maybe the right term because i don't think yeah i don't think it's that's, fair I, I don't know i think it's not harsh more so then it's like i don't know bands grow they run their course like it just ends sometimes yeah uh, and i don't think that's a failure i think that just is the i don't know when trees die it's not a failure it's just like yeah, yeah. the tree lived 100 years <laughs> and now it's not a tree anymore now it's ready to get dirt and become something else exactly. um but I don't know. I think it's exciting then to yeah, kind of take on that that noble role. What was like? What was the first step then in starting a record label? So you have bands, but like, what is day one before you make the Facebook page? Like, is, does it start in a notebook? Like, what is day one the the first inkling of a record label? Day one. I don't know if this is the same for every label, but for ours, it was like we were all part of a Discord channel mm -hmm. through Days, the record label here in Connecticut. Shout out to Lumpy. <laughs> um. There's a bunch of people in there. We're all just talking on some friendly shit. Mm -hmm. And eventually I get a DM one day from one of the people who talks a fair amount and gets constant responses from people. He's like, hey, you want to join a, an Instagram chat filled with some people from the Days Chord? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll join. So we get in there. We're all just shooting the shit as friends, getting to know each other. And uh, there was a moment when somebody floated out the idea of like we should start a label kind of as a joke mm -hmm. and so we would fuck around with well, what should we call this should it be excuse me geez should it be called this should it be called thousand year should it be called that and ultimately it was always just a joke we'd come up with the funniest ones like 
Gangsta Records. Who the <laughs> what fucking label? <laughs> a hardcore label is called Gangsta Records, and they see a bunch of dudes looking like me running it, and they're like, "Hmm, sun doesn't line up here." You know, the fucked up part is that would be the best marketing, almost like. There's almost like, like uh, I'm not telling you to change your name right now, but like there is an argument that like that is the best thing you could do because it's just free publicity from the whole internet. Yeah, people like, are just like, yo, you heard about this stupid ass name? Yep, yep. <laughs> and and if ten percent of those people go and like the bands, then it's like mission accomplished. Yeah, I mean that's the I, would, I don't know. I don't want. I was gonna name some gimmicky marketing campaigns recently, but I think that's a taboo subject. That, yeah, I don't yeah. really want to dive into here, but like. That's what it is. Yeah, it's just, can we stir the pot enough to make people talk? Exactly. And to some degree, gigs, it's like, you know, I guess you're, I guess it's offensive to, I don't know, culture. It's, <laughs> it's not your culture to, to claim. Uh, but it's not like a, yeah, I don't know. It's a almost foolproof way I to keep, you. like, yeah. great eyes on you guys. Straight up, right which, is, yeah. which is kind of the fun thing. Like, after after we're done, I'll actually tell you what RS stands for, sure. so you'll understand completely. But sure. It is RuneScape, by the way. <laughs> like it's, yeah. I said it wasn't. It is. It really he is. He already told me after the podcast in the future, and I already know. Yeah. It's Dude, my fucking uh, mates are going to get so pissed <laughs> <laughs> that they're going to be like, yo, no, it's not. I'm like, Dude, my bad. No, yeah. dude. No, no, you're good. We just fuck around a lot. Um, yeah. As I <laughs> life goes on uh what is day one of the label so you're in the discord label right. kind of starts uh when does this thing go from like a, a meme to like a oh fuck actually I, I mean it almost sounds like someone makes a facebook page as like a look at this like to, yeah. to the next step of the meme and then all of a sudden it's like wait i actually kind of like this so there was like an emote and one of the in the discord mm -hmm. and i'm like you know what fuck it we already threw out the name gangsta and that's a react in there as well so fire i grabbed one of the images the worst resolution possible like i'm pretty sure like 151 by the same dimension <laughs> uh little tiny square perfect blow it up on my phone i'm like fuck it let me just add records on the bottom of this sent it off as a joke mm -hmm. and they're like yo this is sick <laughs> we should actually do this i'm like honestly okay. well, i'm down for this and um i believe it was my boy chris shout out chris root that was the one to actually put forward the idea officially and be like, should we actually start a record label? To a lot of responses being like, yes, I'm down. No second thought to, yo, if this is gonna be a dead serious thing, yes, I'm down. Which over time it's become really dead set. Like mm -hmm. in the beginning it was like, yeah, let's see what happens. This is mm -hmm. gonna be fun. Uh, especially with our first release, that was we cataloged it triple zero because it was a test to see what the market was going to be mm -hmm. like if people were going to pay attention to the label or pay attention to the bands. Um, but for day one, literally, it was just finalizing the name and being like, okay, now we have to trademark this. Now we mm -hmm. have to get an LLC going. We need this to be as legitimate as possible so people aren't like pointing fingers or raising suspicion. So fully legitimate uh, when does this thing start like how uh, how long ago ish is this discord conversation uh become legitimate yeah for sure um this was we started officially late i want to say late april okay late april early may we were cracking on it um the easy thing was coming up with a name everything else was like okay who do we get in contact with mm -hmm to like help us out with this or with that or like what's the best way to go about trademarking which luckily my cfo my boy Corey, he is a whiz with financials so he literally got us up and running like that it was so sick um how many of you are involved in this like leadership team there's in the leadership team there's about i can't put an exact number on the leadership because we all kind of like pitch ideas mm -hmm. and run with them if they're good enough. Uh, but there's me, my boy, Corey, I want to say Dan for sure, which that's always fun having two Dan's on the same label. And somebody says, yo, Dan, mm -hmm. and both of us respond. Oh, what's up? Yeah. Not you. <laughs> I'm like, oh, <laughs> but there's, I want to say a total of 14 of us from like graphics guys to promotion to the people that are going to be filing taxes to me. Hell yeah. Which is, it's, it's cool. And do they spread the country, the world, the state? Like, how diverse are we? All over the country. I'm the only one from Connecticut on the yeah. label. Hell yeah. Everybody else is um, New York, Seattle, um, 
California for sure, uh, Maryland, upstate New York. Like we cover All most of the, the bases. Yeah, hell yeah. We're trying to get some. I'm thinking about getting somebody from like the middle of the country because mm -hmm. now we have, as you guys are seeing this, we got two Texas bands now. Mm -hmm. We just did. Um, at noon today, Miss Anthrope from Fort Worth, Texas. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Subtle plug. Hell yeah, dude. Please plug it all up. Uh, before we move on there, uh, with a triple zero, uh, you mentioned the triple zero test run. Mm. Uh, my logic, I also use the three digit numbers, and mine was a way to force myself into triple digit episodes. Was that your mindset as well? Is like if we put it triple zeros and we got to hit 100 at some point? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm not sure if that was like the initial plan, but it's definitely a thought that's. Mm -hmm constantly there above our heads of like what's going to happen once we reach a number close to 100 because right now we're on four technically mm -hmm. the fifth release so hopefully we get there one day yeah. i'd like to see that that would be really awesome to say rsr 100s out yep that'd be cool yep yeah i have that same thought uh if i continue it once a week i will hit my 100th episode the like right before 2025 it's like that like i can hit it if I miss, I think, three more weeks, then I would hit it like January 1st, 2025. That's awesome. So it works dude. out like a really nice like milestone. Like, all right, cool. I like that. Yeah. That it's a very foreseeable a milestone one. in some sense. Um, hell yeah, dude. So two bands with Texas. Perfect. Great segue for me. Uh, when does, yeah, how does that start? Who's the first band? Why? Uh, what makes them the first band? The first band, uh, funny enough, was we like to feel like we could do it within the family a little bit, the RSR family. Mm -hmm. So first release we're just asking around in our own like team just being like hey who has a band that's active right now that plays shows and wants us to put out music for them and it's like oh i have a band not active okay and then our boy josh he's like hey i have a band we put out our demo earlier this year it was online we did a small run of cassettes and haven't done anything since physically I could talk to the guys about doing CDs. We're like, okay, sure. Let us know. They give us the okay. And we're like, sweet. We got our first band. We need artwork. We need to figure out who we're going to print these through, which both were pretty easy processes looking back at it now versus like back when we were starting, we wanted to make sure it was as good as we possibly can get it as, mm -hmm. as like, uh, as much satisfaction as we could possibly get from, okay, we like the way this looks. There's nothing that we want to change about it from CD artwork to the double-sided insert to the back of the artwork to the spine even. We're just like, yeah, this this all looks great. Mm -hmm. So we sent that off. Uh, Lumpy got us in contact with Brad from Copycats, which is a CD distribution company really amazing quality when i got the cds in i was shocked i'm like damn i knew these were gonna be good but not like this mm -hmm. this is crazy and it's fake until you make it right it's the kind of classic mantra of going yeah. through and making sure that each thing is right because if the packaging is all right then we are also a professional label mm -hmm. um, and yeah it's to some degree yeah that's exactly what it is exactly plus just holding it that's when the realization sets that like yeah this is this is real. Mm -hmm. This is like actually happening. RSR is on this CD. Like yep. this is real now. So no slowing down. We gotta mm -hmm. keep going with it. Can't oh, yeah. just like, hey guys, here's one release and then dip for months. Like that's not good for anybody. Not mm -hmm. the bands. Not for the label. It's just not good. Yeah. Uh, we were talking before the podcast and we were chatting about uh, how to me labels are kind of scary things that like. Uh, in my experience, I have to reach out to them with budgets and hope that they give me as much money as I want. And uh, there's some negotiation process there. And it's always like a, I feel like I'm talking to like, the, you know, the, my boss almost like it's this kind of scary overlord that I that yeah. is all knowing. And to me, it's like I don't quite know what a good budget is. And I know that. Uh, yeah, money in my head is not the same as money in their head. So how much can I ask for? I know the with labels, we're often told, like, ask for twice what you think you can because they'll probably just send you a check for it. Fair. Uh, but so, yeah, me, to me, labels are these, like, scary bankers almost. Of, like, I just, I'm <laughs> trying to get money from them and I'm hoping that they're just nice to me and they respect me and don't bother me and don't come, yeah, don't come back for me. Oh, for sure. Uh, but that's obviously not not what someone would want to start a label to become, right? And they think the the band version of that is that labels are people who just steal money from you and make your life hard and don't yeah. quit and hold you back and they gamble on you and don't support you if you're not the the big fish in the pond kind of. Um, but of course, these are all negative things that no one would start a label with the intention of becoming. Yeah, I think exactly. That maybe happens through 
uh, yeah, through corporate greed at some point. Uh, what then makes you start the label and go, no, we can do this different. We can do this better. How do you improve upon that model? I guess. I think basically it all just boils down to we're trying to like have fun with doing this. We're not trying mm -hmm. to like force people into a contract where we're like, hey, you have to do this set amount of albums underneath us. Mm -hmm. You have to do this. You have to hit these numbers. Like mm -hmm. we, we're not about that. We're just about trying to help people like put their music to physical format mostly because a lot of people in this day and age just exclusively focus on digital, which no fault to that, you know, mm -hmm. that's the way the world's been moving for <laughs> the past 10 years or so. So people are going to just naturally focus on that. But there are still people out there like myself, like a bunch of other people on my team and anybody who's been supporting RSR, there is still a demand for physical stuff. Mm -hmm. So we're like, okay, let's do CDs because for some reason CDs are dying, even though it's the best. Mm -hmm. It's literally the best. Yep. Uh, so we're just trying to make it fun and as easy going for the bands that want to sign on or just have music put out through us because we have bands that are signed to us, but we also have bands that are just like, we're just doing a print run for them, mm -hmm. as far as I'm aware. Almost uh, like a be. distribution deal, kind of. Yeah, basically just like, hey, we'll help you guys out. Like, we'll print X amount of this for you, whether it's a cassette, a t-shirt, or a CD. We'll do this for you guys. How many would you guys want to have for yourselves? And then that's when the money comes into it a little bit. Mm -hmm. We'll put up the cost for whatever needs to get done. Like cassettes, for example, we just put up uh, into submission two releases in the past week. So one of the bands, they're getting half of it, so they're paying for a little less than half. We're giving them kind of a break, which is what we're trying to do. We're trying to make it as easy as possible for the bands to get their music out there, whether like I said, on cassette or CD. And shit, I'm blanking. <laughs> no worries at all, dude. Uh, yeah, thoughts have a way of escaping your brain down here. And it's this weird thing of like, uh, in real life, we would never be forced to continue talking. It would just be normal to pause in here because there's microphones in the face. Yeah, you pause for, sure. for one second. It's like, oh no, oh no. <laughs> um, now you're chilling. So uh, I like this idea that, yeah, you're trying to like benefit the bands and do it in a more kind of casual and DIY way almost. Yeah, but trying to make it in, as friendly as possible um, too. Where but, we're like not trying to be like, hey guys, we need to do a large amount of mm -hmm. each thing you want. And yeah. they'll be like, that's out of our budget. Yeah. It's like totally understandable. We are on a budget ourselves being as DIY as we can be. So mm -hmm. everything that we get going, we're, we know that we're not going to see an insane return. We're going to break even and then a little bit mm -hmm. some so we could just pump that into the next band. That's, you know... It's as easy as possible for yeah. us. Uh, we're not trying to be big, scary dogs like yeah. everybody else. Like I feel like most of these people behind the scary image of them being a giant company, mm -hmm. I guess is the word for it, is there are people behind it that actually do care about the music. Yeah. They care about w how people will like interpret the music, how they're going to respond to it. Uh, that's a big fear with a lot of us is we're like, oh. I wonder how this release is going to hit. Like, we know it's good. Mm -hmm. I wonder how the people are going to respond to it. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, this latest release before today, uh, A Thief's Blade, they put out a, a really good EP. Even if it wasn't released through RSR, I would still be all over that. Mm -hmm. Like, it capitalizes on that perfect sound that is hot right now. And I know that sounds really fucking bad coming from me running the fucking label. But it, it's just true. The sound is hot right now. Like, there's so many bands out there doing this sound, but mm -hmm. there's even less of them that are doing it perfectly, where it's like you listen to a record and you're like, damn, what year did this come out? Mm -hmm. Oh, this came out this year? Oh, man, this sounds like something from, like, the early 2000s or 90s, like, just in terms of the actual writing of the songs. It just feels like that old bleeding through, mourning again, or not morning again, someone's going to roast me for that. <laughs> <laughs> Disembodied and all those, like, bloodlet, all those type of bands. Mm -hmm. That sound is so cool. Yeah. And people have been clamoring for it. I'm stoked to see it being as popular as it is now. I'm curious, I think, through through the first five, or sorry, you said it was, I think, three releases or four, and then 
fifth is coming out today. Yeah, the fifth one is today. The fifth one is today. So mm-hmm. through five releases, I think, is it fair to say that you guys are still finding your sound for what you would hope the record sounds like? Are you a little kind bit. of accepting different bands? And yeah, I mean, how much have you denied bands? I guess was maybe the alternative way to say that of like, mm-hmm. are you set in, we're going to have bands at this and you had a friend's band who was like kind of interested, but it just didn't quite fit what you were aiming for? Yeah. Uh, the only time I can think of somebody reaching out and we, we didn't even actually say no to anybody. Mm-hmm. Uh no, that's a lie. I just thought about one. Sure. There was a, a band that was pitched to us that we could do. I'm listening to it. It's a good release. I'm not shitting on it. Mm-hmm. But I felt like for what we're trying to go for on the label, it didn't necessarily fit. And I immediately told my friend, I'm like, hey, tell your boy this would better fit on like a DIY punk label. Something more sure, in yeah, that yeah. realm versus yep. like what we're going for, like the heavier aspect, like... Uh, most of the bands we have out now are hardcore. There's like a couple metalcore bands in there, but they all have that like metalcore energy, mm-hmm. or not metalcore, hardcore energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, and how many bands do you have now? We have five, 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 five. Oh, yeah. Like five out. We have a couple that we're working on still. Um, whether we're just waiting to hear back from them or about music, whatever the case may be, we're got some stuff lined up of five officially and what's been your kind of process in these releases so are you helping them get into the studio time or are you get receiving the record once it's done it sounds like and then helping yeah put it in the right places and then as, as dan slosser what are your two hands doing what are you involved in this process my two hands i i try to do as much of anything as i possibly can sure but with there being you know 12 of us mm-hmm. there's certain stuff where it's like hey i can't necessarily do this can you guys like respond to this email or chat with this band Mm -hmm. um can you hit up this distributor um for studio time we're not not doing that right now just Mm -hmm. because we're still so young we had one of our bands ask if we can help with touring dates and um as much as i would love to we just don't have that ability at this moment i'm sure sure in the future we're absolutely going to cover our bases of trying to grab promoters that touch base and whether it's california like all of california or certain areas um like the southern belt like texas louisiana yeah. florida um and especially the east coast like we're trying to because a good amount of us are based up here in the east coast so we're trying to keep that as home as we can in terms of mm-hmm. like i want to find people close to me so i could be like hey because we have two massachusetts bands so i want to be able to help them out and put mm-hmm. them on shows but for the most part, they've been kind of handling that. We're just more of the, hey, we want to do CDs for you guys and shirts. You guys okay with it? Sure, we'll take X amount. Boom, mm-hmm. send them off to them. It's That's at least us right now. I'm sure we're going to move way faster in the future. Mm-hmm. Like, we're going to move down the line where I'm hoping we're going to do vinyl someday. Hell yeah. That would be really dope. Um, we're trying to line something up kind of like that now. Is that kind of like the next milestone? Yeah, that's that's going to be the next big hit because we haven't even looked into how much it costs, but I'm assuming it's not cheap. Like, CDs and cassettes are not cheap, but records have got to be, like, crazy price. My understanding is that they're also, like, super backed up in the printing presses right now, wherever you make vinyls, that it's you're not just paying a premium because they are so hot right now, but you're paying a premium for it to be expedited or else you're going to wait a year for you to get your thing. Yeah, exactly. Like, wasn't it Adele or something like that? Like, she put out a record, made a bunch of variants. I only remember this because I saw a picture okay. on Facebook of um, a Goodwill rack that was just full of Adele's album. And I'm like, wow, the printing plant got pressed, like, put behind so far for this like that kind of sucks i feel bad for adele the printing company like anybody that's involved with that that sucks it also seems like not that i know anything about the industry of printing (laughs) vinyls but it seems like an insane thing to not be able to just like buy another vinyl printing thing like who i don't know who adele's like management people but like it seems like whoever they are commissioning to do do, this should be a big enough company that it's like yeah okay we have this huge thing like let's increase our output here yeah it's like like, how about like just get some plants like buy them you yes. know what i mean and make them dead set on okay you're only pressing this record for yeah. right now instead yeah. of branching out to however many they did and be like hey basically slow down the production of 
all vinyl forever. And probably what it was like the in uh, uh, probably had nothing to do with the label. My my guess and my uneducated guess would be that's probably the printing press telling Adele's team like. Oh, we're doing it. Don't you worry. Yeah. And then six yeah. months later, it's like, no, 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 it's coming tomorrow. It's and coming. Then, yeah. It's just like they got, you know, however many people they have yeah. working there, you know, it, it, you got to think about the human quality at that point. Yeah. Where it's like, yeah, they're big companies and all that, but there are people mm-hmm. behind it, like slaving away a little bit yep. for it, depending. Yep. Uh, like they're working their asses off for it. Uh, how does this thing scale for you? Then I think that's a good segue of like at, at, at some point in running a, a company as a as record label grows, like. Yeah, you do have to make some hard calls at some point. And I guess in this context, it's like, uh, how much are you willing to overwork that person making the vinyl because your band needs it? And how do you uh, how do you scale in a way that you can then be competitive with the uh, yeah with the established you know big hitters in the world, but still do it in your ethical way? Mm. So basically, like I'm the type of dude that's worked in fast food or worked in restaurant, me- meaning. I don't know what the word is, remedial type job sure. where you're just constantly working your ass off for the company's big bucks. Mm-hmm. So I know what that feels like to be under that pressure a little bit. Not exactly like these plants do, like every place is different, but I'd assume they're probably under a good amount of stress, especially yeah. if there's rushes on certain orders. Because yep. um, for us, like when we went to do tapes, they had an option for rushes. I'm like, seven day rush why is that an option who the hell is like that bad at planning where they're like yo we need to do this release oh it's coming out friday oh my god we still didn't press it yet yep send it yep you know most bands like, i'll tell you what <laughs> <laughs> it's most of them and that's also why most of them fail kind of going back to square one here straight up because uh, they'd be rushing on shit yep. but um i try to just like make it as friendly as possible as understanding as possible too mm-hmm. where it's like hey we know you're just a person working here. We're not mm-hmm. trying to like bombard you with an insane amount of stuff that you won't be able to handle. Mm-hmm. We make sure we're going to people that can handle high volume, but not try to be like, hey, do all of this like in a fast turnaround time. Not the case. We're okay with whatever they want to roll with. We just will update people and be like, hey, these cassettes are taking, excuse me, these cassettes are taking some time. Thank you for your patience. Like we're just playing the waiting game, both mm-hmm. parties, the the customers as well as us, the mm-hmm. label. Um, but we're just trying to make it as not scary as possible, as friendly, as easy going. Like if a band gets a proper offer from a label where they're like, hey, we'll pay you X amount of money over X amount of time. And they are like, hey, we're going to leave you guys. That's cool. That's yeah. cool. Go chase the bag. Get this bread. Honestly, yep. like, do what you guys got to do. That's right by you guys. Mm-hmm. Like, don't worry about. Oh no, we're already tied up with this label. Like, it's not us. Yeah. Hell yeah. I think that's the right way to be. But I think I uh, I recently had the thought that I'm like right on the cusp of like ruining this whole industry for myself, and not in a not that I am going to ruin the industry for everyone else, but ruining it and like I'm learning more about it than I want to know at some points. Uh, and one like small version of this, is I was watching a video the other day from a band uh, and it's a director I love and I'm very intentionally not going to say too much more about them because I don't want to put anyone on blast there. Yeah. Um, but it's one of those, I was watching it and there was a green screen thing and with, uh, I'm also going to put myself on blast here with green screen, uh, look for the feet. The feet are where all the mistakes are going to be. The rest mm. of the body is generally pretty easy to do. Yeah. Anything that would be touching the ground. So with drums, it's the 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 legs of the stand, I mm-hmm. guess. Uh, anything touching the ground is where you're going to catch the most mistakes and problems. And that's that, that's where you want to look. That's where your eyes yeah. should go. Um, and I was watching a video and I caught one where they're like in this void. And then between the vocalist's feet is just like the bumpy, bumpy green screen curtain. Oh. Uh, and so in most music videos, what you end up seeing, if it's clearly green screen, is that they put something in front of the feet that they're standing <clears throat> kind of like behind a little hill or something. So you don't mm. actually see the feet. It's okay. uh, and. I'm saying this very much like in the next couple of months as my music videos keep coming out very much look at people's feet and they'll be Hell behind yeah. a little thing. And that's exactly why it's because you're trying to avoid this. Uh, yeah. Everything else is very easy to, to key out, to make clean and the feet are hard. Mm. I was watching a video and I caught that and it was like, fuck, <laughs> like I, I now I'm aware, not that you have this cool video, but that you film this in your garage and you just didn't iron out the green screen. Right. And like, oh, that's man. normal. I don't do it either. It's, there's only so much you can control in a finite yeah. thing, but like, Instead of watching it and being like, this is so sick, and I love this director, I'm sure the video is great, but instead of having any appreciation for that, all I saw was like, 
fuck that green screen was wrinkly <laughs> and it's it's just yeah it's not right and then my i clicked and like a few minutes later i was watching this guitar play through and it was lit with lighting we want to light you from the back generally and this was mm -hmm. lit like dead on which is the least flattering light and i was watching i was like i literally i'm so annoyed at whoever put this light here that fuck everything else in this <laughs> video uh and it's like that's not that's not fair to anyone else and it's not fair to me even like it takes away from the 16 year old version of me who wanted to just love and be inspired by this thing yeah and now it's like as i'm yeah, that's on the video side and also on the business side. As I become aware of some of the cuts and the yeah the underbelly of some of the label stuff, oh, it's sure. like, fuck, dude. Uh, for you as a label person, like, how do you enter this world and still love the music? Like, have you run into this issue where the the desire to do this thing is now in, in, uh, infringing upon like your ability to love this thing that you always loved? Never, okay, never. It's never gonna fuck with my passion for music. Oh, I have yeah. been so deep into music even before I just thought about starting a band when I was a kid. Like, sure. just it's just been so immersed that I don't think there's gonna be anything that's gonna kill my passion for yeah. this music. Even if let's let's say hypothetically I decide to step down from the record label, yeah, that'll never happen. Yeah. But I still would be so much of a fan of the music. It's so deep in my system, in mm -hmm. my soul that I just can't help but surround myself with it in yeah. any way, shape, or form, whether yeah. it's being a concert goer and going to see a local band play at a the Soba Bar in Milford mm -hmm. or the Point Beach or Cupcake Show in Watertown. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I I just will love this stuff forever. Like, Hell yeah. Nothing will stop it. I, I think the... I think it's all that passion for it. And I think to that degree is also why I haven't ever really been interested in audio stuff of like, I feel like I have no ear for EQs and mixes. Like it's a song where it's not a song. Same. And to me, that's the best way to like, I'm so happy. At least I have that. Cause like, I just can't watch your music video anymore. Like it just, yeah, I'm looking for your feet on the green screen. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. It's about. like, it's, it's once you're on the other side of it, you start mm -hmm. to like notice stuff. You're like, Mm. Yeah, and I, this video is great. I love the colors and everything, but what's that mm -hmm. right there in this split frame of the shot? What's that right, right there? Doesn't matter. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and so I like almost uh, want to preserve my ignorance of audio. Of like, let me be blissfully ignorant. I don't yeah. want to know who has good mixes or bad mixes or who stole the riff from who. Like, yeah. I don't hear that. Like, it's just two cool songs. I don't know. I feel you. And it's it's beautiful. But yeah, I think in the record label end, it's like when you start to see marketing campaigns roll out, is there some part of you going like, ooh, that band's not getting a good cut of that merch? You know, like, it, it seems like it must poison the well to some degree. Yeah, when I'm looking at other labels, I'm like, hmm, they signed this band, really? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, no disrespect to these two labels. I don't care. I'll throw their name out because they're so huge. Mm -hmm. Like, who? Yeah. Sumerian Records signed a country artist recently. No disrespect to country that guy that made the song, none of that. Mm -hmm. But there's like a point where I'm looking at it, I'm like... Wait, it wasn't the guy who made the song, right? Mm, yeah, it was just um, some dude made a song, Sumerian picked them up, I'm pretty sure, and they put it out. I'm just looking at their label going, they have based their entire career, their entire run being a label off of genty, progressive music, like After the Burial and Periphery, born of osiris mm -hmm. like w why are you choosing now to tap into this industry is it because you realize that this is super hot and you want to cash in on like the pop country wave whatever it is mm -hmm. um but i i have i have strong suspicions that that release won't do well just because it's on sumerian mm -hmm. if it was on any other label or the dude was independent probably would be fine mm -hmm. and i feel bad i'm talking smack but it's yeah. just things that I observe. Like, for us, we're only trying to put our best foot forward. Like, the bands that we want to grab, we want to make sure that we as a team, because there's 14 of us, like, I feel like that's a good pool of judging how the market's going to react to it. Mm -hmm. So if the a team likes what we're about to put out, we drop it. If it's, like, half the team that likes it and the other half is kind of iffy on it, We'll sit on it for a little bit, discuss it, let the people that are iffy re listen to it a little bit more. Maybe opinions change and then we go forward. But so far, it's been very seamless in terms of just, yes, let's do this. Do like, you guys have like listening parties or like? <laughs> yo, that, that like is, cool? we haven't, but we totally should. Yeah, like you're already in Discord. Yeah. Like yeah. you already set up perfectly to like oh stream it all together somehow. That's a great idea. Um, That's a really great idea. Most, for the most part, we just, um, Somebody will find a music on their own. They'll mm -hmm. send it. 
into we have our own separate discord channel just for the label so we can like a potential band section will get filled every week with mm-hmm. something new where it's like yo at everyone check this <laughs> out we should do this yeah and uh for the most part it's been like oh yeah let's tackle this but recently it's become a little bit busier mm-hmm. to where we're like okay let's tackle all this stuff we have at hand right now before we even attempt to reach out to this band to say hey we really like your stuff yeah <laughs> like i want to have everything situated as perfectly as it can be before we want to like jump into something where it might be too much it might not be but the only way to find out is if you go for it yep. so that's the great great problem to have though is that you're uh, uh, gaining more work and more yeah more traction than you can handle right for now sure. and yeah it's about getting more efficient and then hopefully growing the team at some point i guess is the next next level of scalability there oh yeah uh, is there is there an interest in scaling past the 14 people or is that like i, I think that's a hard if you're the CEO, it's easy to bring on one more person. But if you're 14 people, it's hard to be the 15th person joining that party. Yeah, and it's you're just showing up and everybody's already got a million things in front of you. And mm-hmm. you're just joining like, whoa, what are you guys doing right now? Yeah. Like, can yeah. you catch me up to speed? It's like, sure. Da, 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 da. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. And, of course, at a bank, they might have that same thing of 14 employees and the 15th, but they have 100 years of work experience before that makes this a standardized and easy process. For you guys running the label, like, that 15th person will be the first time you've ever had to explain <laughs> the inner workings to this yeah. someone. You know, I'm sure you guys are all still kind of almost figuring out on the fly. Like, that's how any business 100%. starts is that you, you DIY it for a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then to have to turn around um, thinking that in my, my work, I've... Uh, with the, I work with a production company that works with fall and spring concerts at colleges. Nice. Uh, and at that, I recently found out that I have an intern this semester. So I've had that same thing of like, how do I teach this thing to someone that I've never been taught? Like I taught myself this. Oh, so how do you like synthesize this information into a way? And it's kind of what you're kind of to solve with the record label of like, how do we bring a 15th person on board? Because we're not even conscious of all the things we do that have made this thing. We just yeah. kind of did them. And we're now, just doing it because we know this is the way mm-hmm. without like giving it much thought. Yep. You know? Yep. Uh, for sure. Like I had a I had a job that was like that where I didn't really get trained super properly. Mm-hmm. And then they hired people and they're like, hey, we know you're not a trainer because yeah. they get paid more. <laughs> uh, but can you train these people how to do this job? I'm like yeah, I can do that to mm-hmm. the best of my ability to what you guys showed me. Absolutely. Uh, so I'm trying to, like, for this label, if we do bring more people on, which I'm very open to because there's always more input. There's always more thoughts being thrown out there about, hey, how cool would this be? Or we should do this as a shirt or something. Like, uh, we have a gra- we have a couple different graphics guys. They're both killing it right now. Everything uh, looks great, yeah. Yeah, shout out to Aiden and Lewis, seriously. I don't remember their Instagram handles off the top of my head, but That's great. Good. Yeah, People great find dudes. It. <laughs> yeah, straight up. They'll find it. They they got RSR tagged in their bio. They'll you'll find it. Hell but yeah. um great dudes. They have put out killer work for us mm-hmm. where every time I'm like, damn, this is gonna be for our label. Holy shit, this is awesome. <laughs> like um Hell yeah. But yeah, it's kind of just about trying to make it fun mm-hmm. easy we're trying to have a good time if we have more people on the label awesome if we don't add more people it is what it is mm-hmm. but i'm trying to just like keep the team you know interested in doing it like yep. making sure their passion is still with it if it's not then it is what it is but mm-hmm. you know trying to make it fun for literally everybody from the bands to us on the label we're trying to make sure everybody's having a good time and not worrying about something hell yeah uh, for anyone who is listening to this who may be in a band, what would, uh, I guess, how would they contact you? What would make them qualified to reach out to you? Uh, are you guys still reaching out to bands? Uh, we're still reaching out to bands. However, we do have a submission section. It's not really called the submission section. It's contact page on our big cartel okay. where uh, we actually had two bands reach, us, reach out to us through that. Hello. And uh, that was about... It was for Blood Money and for Thief's Blade. So the first two releases, we were reaching out. We're like, hey, Mm -hmm. we're getting started. Inhumane Execution was the first band. They were very open to having that done. They're young kids killing it. Uh, I think they go go to Berkeley. They're a really killer band. Um, And then the other band is Shiki from California. That was all my boy Chris Root doing that. He knew the guys personally. 
they had music they're waiting on masters for and he's like hey i might have it wrong but he i think he hit them up and was like hey would you guys want to do that through rsr they were so down for it we did 50 cds they came out fantastic oh, i'm yeah. actually about to be sending half of them to california later today perfect uh so that's gonna be dope uh those those dudes they hit us up or no we hit them up sorry for blood money they when we got the email we were kind of confused at first we're like someone was able to submit something through the website uh didn't know that was possible <laughs> but yeah. it was awesome when we got it we we listened to it sent it to the channels where we're like everybody needs to listen to this get us your feedback on mm -hmm. this resounding yes of this is hard we need to put this out how can we make this happen we contacted the band back we're like hey we're very interested what would you guys like for us to facilitate for you that's part of our process we we're not going in there with an agenda telling them oh hey we want to do this and this yeah like it's more so what would you guys like for us to do we can do cassettes we give them our options um and then they tell us and we just move on them we don't try to like force anything other than maybe bumping numbers up due to distribution but mm -hmm. that's about it uh they're pretty much free reign to do whatever they want under us it's sweet i've uh i've been thinking about the discord uh thing and i think when i first said you guys should have listening parties i meant like in-house kind of between the 14 of you guys yeah and think about it more it's like no that should be what makes your label unique is that you just have a discord that's the best way to like bring people in uh Sorry, I'm like confusing too many thoughts and I'm jumping between you're lanes good, in my good. brain. In in business, like the email list is still king of like, how do you get in touch with clients? How do you retain people's interest? And like social media is hard because you have to opt in to look at Instagram. And then once you open Instagram, you're going to see the Kardashians first and the record labels, the 10th thing, right? Yeah. So how do you make the, the record label the first thing someone sees when they look in? It's in their email. Uh and then to me with Discord, it's like that's the updated email. Like, that's a modern version of email. For sure. And so it, with with Blood Money, it's like what if the Blood Money record drops in the Discord? And you have a live streaming party at midnight, and then it drops like at noon the next day, like on spot streaming services. And that's a way to get people in. And it also means that every time you drop a record, you now have a Discord full of people who are interested enough to come watch a record when it drops, and they're the perfect people to drop a record too. Yeah. So for the most part, we. <laughs> we kind of hijacked the day's chord. I'm not going to lie. Okay. Where it's like anytime an RSR release is coming out, they yeah. have a whole section called promote your shit. So gotcha. literally yeah. anybody can post anything that they've got mm -hmm. going on. And from the start, one of the high profile people in the day's chord was the one to post in promote your shit saying, yo, we started a label. Hell Check yeah. this shit out. Okay. And people were like, Yo, Chris Root said that. I'm mm -hmm. checking it out. Yep. So cosigns are important. Yep. For real. They're really important. Yep. You, if you know the right people. <laughs> but um yep. it, it started off slow, but like more than what I was expecting when we started. That's one of the fun things about this label is we all have our own expectations of how something's gonna do. Mm -hmm. And then when it gets put out and it passes the expectation, it's like damn okay there's a market like for the blood mm -hmm. money stuff it would have been cool to do a listening party in there but um part of the reason we didn't is a good amount of the band is in the days court so they were already like promoting hey we got a release coming out they mm -hmm. didn't i don't think they were saying it was through rsr quite yet until we made the official post mm -hmm. um we basically just try to go with whatever the band wants to do if they're like yeah. hey we want to release it on this time on this day we're like, cool, let's do it. We'll, yeah. we'll go live then. We'll have the links live. The Instagram post will be up. We'll make it a collaborative one. That's a big thing for reach. Mm -hmm. A lot of people won't realize nowadays with Instagram is you can tag somebody in the caption, right? But their fans aren't going to see that. They're just going to see if they're following you, they'll see the post. Mm -hmm. Versus if you make it a collaborative, both parties or now they have all four collaborations so you can make all four different individual pages have the exact same thing all the likes from all those pages converge together and it's sweet helps with promotion on mm -hmm. both aspects and now. snowballs too right a, a post with more likes is more likely to be promoted and then get more likes right but there's mm -hmm. no likes off the ground and i think your your label almost has the same thing built in with having 14 of you guys spread throughout the country with your own yeah. local scenes that you're tied into is that I mean, I'm, uh, for me with the podcast, one challenge, like, it's just me. And that's the benefit of having a guest every week is, like, 
if if I did a solo episode every week, one, I would lose my mind. It'd be crazy. Like, there's a lot of problems with like talking to myself in my basement for an hour every week. <laughs> totally separate. But like, I know what you uh, mean, yo. I know what you mean. <laughs> but also, it's like there would be so hard for me to branch out because I'm limited only to the people I can touch. Yeah. With 14 of you guys in the label, it's like you have 14 times the reach. So when you have an expectation for the Blood Money releaser, uh, yeah, I'm using them as a name. Yeah. Um, but when do you have an expectation for that? What you're expecting is like, if I dance Losser, put this out, I think it would get this. And there's 14 of you guys all setting whatever that bar is. Yeah, so exactly. It it In their own easy. minds, too. Yep. Uh, and so it makes it very easy for that to to grow. And, it's, yeah, it's a kind of an inbuilt success mechanism that is similar to the collaborator on Instagram. But, yeah, almost a, an even deeper network of people. Oh, for sure. For sure. Um, hell, yeah, dude. We are getting close to our hour. Um, what was my other one? Um Hell yeah. I feel like that's a good good place on the label. Uh, my last thing I'd like to chat about is just like life outside of music. Like this is all the all the inside of music life, and I think that that is a huge part of us. It's an all-consuming part of us. For sure. But it's not all of us. Uh, yeah. what else is interesting to you outside of starting a label? What else has been yeah, what else do you like to do outside of that? Shit, outside of music? Mm-hmm. Uh I like to play games. Okay. That's always fun. What's the game? What's the one that I'm playing Diablo 4 like crazy okay. right now? Loving that game. Okay. I'm kind of um, still like indifferent if I like it more than Diablo 3 because <laughs> they both have their moments, but sure. that's what I've been grinding on a lot lately. Uh, when I'm not doing that, I just I am like to be around my friends and hang out with them, socialize. Um, Are you still like writing music independently? Oh, yeah. You're still yeah. creating as well as doing label stuff? I try to make stuff as whenever the feeling hits me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I know you play guitar, so maybe you know what I'm saying. Barely. Like, That's a very generous <laughs> term. I appreciate you including me in the people who can play guitar category. Dude, of course. I don't put myself in there. Dude. Hey, you've got a guitar. Uh-huh. You've played it. Yo, I count it. I don't <laughs> care. As long as that passion's there. Sure. Um, but shit <laughs> dude i gotta learn drums that's my next my next goal for me is uh drums i'm waiting sick. for the winter yeah i want to get an e-kit uh in the summer i ended up getting into golf i taught myself how to play golf i'm ass at it but it's been nice like my my dilemma is just that my, my computer so much and i'm always editing and like i'm always attached to a screen so golf Same. was nice as a way like i'm just gonna go for two hours and like everything will be away and i'm out and like yeah, I don't have the mental capacity to check my phone. Golf is it. pretty cool. I've been um, trying to get into that lately a little bit um, on the most basic scale, like yep. playing golf games. And I'm yep. talking about like Hot Shots Golf Hell 2 yeah, from like way back. It's way more fun than real golf to do it that way. It's I'll so fun. What. It's so fun. I joke that like I'm just hiking. Like I'm not playing golf. Like, I'm just For real, I'm just walking. Yeah. I'm hitting sun every now and again, but I'm yeah. walking a lot. Yeah. Like, And that's part of the fun because you get to just – enjoy your surroundings yeah. your scenery yeah you know get to feel the breeze um, hear the birds whatever the case may be that's been my summer project but yeah my winter project is gonna be the drums and i'm so determined i'm like i'm i feel like i'm mostly saying it and i've repeatedly said it to like will myself into doing it I'm like yeah. i can't bitch out now i've said it too <laughs> many times so i'm either a liar or i gotta keep my word this would be a good um, space for straight up for an e-kit this yeah, would be perfect space exactly especially the with the plan. setup you've got right yeah, now that'd be perfect right there uh, and then, yeah, I'll have everyone give me a little lesson while they're all here. You got my music friends involved, teach me paradiddles and all the dumb stuff. Oh, that man. Be crying. They're going to throw about. some terms at you where like, was that even English? Mm-hmm. Yo, what is that? Well, that's exactly, that's that pretty much that's exactly why I want to learn them is because on video sets, there are times where uh, someone will. Yeah, they're describing a drum fill, and I'm, you know, I'm saying, uh, can we plug in this part? And they're saying, oh, the the fill from the blah 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 toms to the, and I'm like, uh, it's like the maybe. Yeah. <laughs> is it at 34 seconds in the song? Is that the part? <laughs> um, and so yeah, I think like having that vocabulary and being able to ingest that information and just yeah, be aware of which one's the crash, which ones, the, yeah, yeah, which ones the ride. Um, <laughs> Where's yeah. the China go? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Way off to the side on the right. That's yeah. what I've learned. Every kid I've ever seen. China far off here. Whatever the hell they want. Uh, that's a good lesson them. one. I'm <laughs> yes, learning, I'm learning right something right now. <laughs> I've seen uh, kits where it's like, dude will literally have a snare mm-hmm. kick in a floor tom. No rack. Yep. No single tom up on top. I'm like, all right, cool. And then they play and I'm like, that makes perfect sense why you don't use that mm-hmm. because you're not hitting it much. Yep. So... Uh, but drums are fun. Like I tried learning that when I was younger. Yeah. I had a kit in my house. Uh, I only learned a little bit to yep. get me by, 
but I was not enough where I'm like, okay, let me play drums in a really shitty band. Like, nah, mm -hmm. not about that. I feel like I have absolutely no rhythm. Like, it just it, it feels so foreign and impossible to me. And it's also one of those things that feels impossible to learn to me somehow. Like, yeah, there's something. Uh, I guess golf is a good example. Like, it feels very learnable to me because it's very like. I hit the ball and it goes good or it goes bad and I can judge from there. But rhythm, yeah. it's like being off rhythm doesn't feel like something I can like internally calculate. It feels like it's impossible. Like, how do I know this? Yeah. Um, so I'm excited to yeah tackle that. And it's like, I'm sure it is learnable and possible. I just. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it's an overtime type of thing. Yeah. Like you just, you're not, some people are born with rhythm. Some people like learn it over time through trial and error. Yeah. Um, I always felt it in me a little bit, mm -hmm. whether I was like, like when I was a kid, Every kid did this. They'd beat on pot and pans mm -hmm. in their parents' kitchen. Yep. But from what I was told, I was making like actual <laughs> sensible beats out of it. So they were like, they kind of tried to push music a little bit, but didn't gotcha. want to force it. Yep. Where you know, you know how it is. If you try to force something on your child, no matter how much you love it, they might fucking hate it. They might just be like, no, mm -hmm. this isn't for me, dude. Like, <laughs> let me figure this out. Uh, but rhythm. It's it's a beautiful thing. It's it's built off passion. Yeah, you just feel it in your soul, and to me, it's almost indescribable. Mm -hmm. You know, you that's just, exactly the problem to me. Yeah. <laughs> Is that like I need someone to describe it. That's how I could learn it. Say, you just yeah, get like an overwhelming uh, feeling of like something is going to happen. Mm -hmm. You don't know necessarily what it is until you like pick the thing up and you're like, you start fucking around and you decide, oh shit, wait a sec. Let me stop thinking and just yep. just let my body do what it's going to do. And mm -hmm. whatever happens, happens. It's, yeah. It's sweet. I had a little bit of that experience on guitar, and it kind of got to the point where it's like I feel like learning became hard. Like I got past the beginner part where it's hard, and then I learned like the power chords. And then to keep learning from there was like, oh, I don't want to do that work. That's too much. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I'm interested. Interested to see how this goes. Mm -hmm. um, mission mm -hmm. accomplished, my man. That's been our been our good hour uh i know we had a Thank release you. today what are we plugging on where can people check out what are we looking at shit everything, with everything everything i'm gonna plug everything please yep Ours another are, hour of plugs <laughs> <laughs> yo straight up i could do it first hour is content second hour is plugs i'll Let's shout go. out every single person i talked about no i'm kidding um, <laughs> everyone i went so, to high school with <laughs> yo shout out to the gym teacher <laughs> But um, so you can find us, check us out at rsrworldwide.bigcartel.com. Um, you can follow us on Instagram at RSR. No, RS Records Hardcore on Twitter, RS Records HC. Um, Hell yeah. Today, literally, as we're recording, while I was driving up, we just dropped Misanthrope with their self-titled 2023 demo that came out earlier this month banger if you like death metal -y stuff mixed with your hardcore that's the shit for you i'm gonna plug every band right now i don't care starting from the beginning sorry peter dude <laughs> this is the best plug that's ever happened on the show i'm so bad at this stuff please dude, enlighten me learn me i got you it sounds like a wrestling match is about to happen this is sick <laughs> <laughs> Yo, i was about to do something but i'm like nah uh inhumane execution that was our first release triple zero they're sick kids from boston they put out their demo earlier this year. We've got it on CD. Go pick it up on our site. Ishiki with their super long numbered album, 07 something, <laughs> straight out of California with the metalcore heat. If you like glitchy shit, this is for you. Hell Go yeah. listen to it. If you like real deal hardcore, real street shit as it's self-described, go check out Blood Money from Houston, Texas. They are killing it, constantly playing shows. Every time I turn around, they've got a new announcement. So if you're in Texas, fuck with them. Yep. Uh, and most recently, other than those other bands, A Thief's Blade out of Bo not Boston, out of Massachusetts. They are moshcore metalcore to a T. They're so sick. I personally have been listening to that record. I don't want to say nonstop because that puts a wild notion out there. But when I go to listen to music, most of the time I'm putting that record on. It's so good. I can't believe RSR is doing it. All of these releases that have come out, I can't believe RSR is doing them. If they weren't out through us, I'd still be fucking with them. That's the real shit. That's the real shit, dude. That's I the can't, real shit. I can't say it any better than that. Dan Slosser, episode 35. Thanks Mission for having me, accomplished, Peter. dude.